Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for tuning in again. So I received a lot of requests for a how to paint metal tutorial, so I'm going to do that right now. And while we're at it, let's just make them some different colored Christmas bulbs since it's a very similar kind of look. Well, to do that, we need to have a little bit of understanding about how reflection works. So let me do a brief explanation. Really, everything you see, to me, can be defined as basic reflection. It's just angles and light hitting at different angles. So, if you have a surface that is uh, not reflective, okay, on a microscopic level, that's going to be made of a lot of little shapes. So let's just put a bunch of little circles to represent our shapes. And this is a surface, you know, and, and kind of like bleachers are like a big ball pit. I'm going to try to make some perspective of circles behind circles like this. All right, so we have just millions and millions and, and kind of like your computer screen and the individual pixels on that screen, you don't see them individually. You're, you, they're too tiny, so you see a continuous surface and the effect that that has. Well, this is what happens. Let's say we've got an object right here and then we've got a light source right here. Okay, light source is shining. It's making a cast shadow on the surface. Because this is a rough surface and not reflective, there's going to be, uh, imagine the, the dark area where that light is not reflecting, which could also be defined as the reflection of this dark shape. Let's put a shadow under it. All right. So that dark shape is going to appear here on every one of these little, little shapes that make the surface. And so everywhere we have this, now we don't have the reflection of this. It's blocking it. So you're still going to have the reflection of maybe this shape over here that's outside of the shadow. Here, let's make some more of these. All right, you're still gonna have, so I mean, you can imagine that all these little shapes catch all kinds of different reflections from all kinds of different angles. So you're still gonna have that dark reflection of that shape smaller and smaller as it gets further away. But you know what you're gonna have right on this line, suddenly you're gonna have a bright reflection of this light source because it's out of the way. And you're gonna have that bright reflection right next to each little dark area. So you can see that in here, you don't have any of that bright reflection of this light source. When you zoom out and you don't see all these individual circles, that's just going to look like a cast shadow, which is something that you see very easily on a non-reflective surface. But what that is in reality is a million little shapes, million, millions, I don't know how many little shapes, many tiny shapes that don't have the bright reflection of the light. On a smooth surface now, let's say that it's the surface of polished metal, and on a microscopic level it's still very smooth. You're not going to see nearly as much of that shadow. All light that hits that super smooth surface is going to continue the direction that it was coming from. It's going to bounce and continue, so this light is going to come around this object, bounce that way and it's not going to come this way and then bounce toward you. So you're not going to see all the little bright spots, you know, back to the microscopic level. All the little shapes have bright spots that are the bright reflection of this guy here. But if this is really smooth, the light's going to just continue this way. It's not going to hit any edges that bounce the light toward you. So this is not going to look a lot different than this right here because you don't have all of the edges that are bouncing things towards you. You don't have all the edges that are bouncing that shadow towards you either. This reflection is going to appear right here because that's where it's coming right toward you. You know, it's coming this way and then it's bouncing right toward you, right toward me. And so that's why you have the reflection right under the object on a reflective surface. This would come down here and appear right here as it's reflecting directly toward you. Background colors would reflect. That's what you would see where the cast shadow was. You're just going to see the background. Let's say that it's a cloud, a big puffy white cloud. Well, so then, you know, you're going to have the mirror image if it's really reflective. 
And that's what you're going to see there instead of the cast shadow. Because, like I said, you don't have that line of separation to distinguish it. Everything, everything that's happening in this direction doesn't bounce toward your eyes. You don't see that. So you're just going to see the light that is coming from a place where it's going to bounce and hit your eyes. That's why it's different because the surfaces have a different angles of reflection depending on what they're made of on that, on that microscopic level. So, with that in mind, reflection can be very similar because, you know, you have your sphere and you have your ground that is darker than the sky and where you had a shadow that was the ground Right? This is a shadow, and to make it look like a soft shadow, let's just use lines going out like this because I can't really blend with this dry erase marker. So let's say that that's just a soft shadow. The further down it faces toward this dark, darker, darker ground, the more it's shadowed, the less light is hitting it as it faces downward. But let's turn it into a reflection. Let's just make it a hard edge like this. And then let's pull in the background color around the edge. Right here, that's not a very not a very nice line there. So a reflection is going to be the actual reflection of the ground. Like that. So where you might do the soft shading on an object, you might just take that, you know, a shortcut to making something look like chrome like some kind of a metal, is just take the shadows where they would have been and just make them hard edges and turn them into the reflection of darker objects like ground or some, something standing in the room that's not a light source. And then of course you use all your bright colors on the upper parts and just make hard edges so they're like reflections of sky or bright objects. If you have your uh, chrome skull on your motorcycle, you know, Let's make a skull here. Right here. Then you can take the reflection, uh, you know, your shadows and reflections might be really similar. So you go uh, like this right here where this temple is. I can make a shape that comes up in here. I'm going to stay off the very edge of my object. Let's just fill this in. All right, and then I've got a little edge on my eye right here. There might be a little bit of reflection right there. And then I might have hard edges here that are the reflection of the shadow in the eye socket right there. And then I might have um, reflection that is, you know, this might be all darkened down here. But notice that I'm staying off of my edge because the edge is going to capture the background reflections. All right, here you might have a shadow here, and let's see, there's kind of a cheekbone that comes down like this. Right, so a chromed out skull is going to have this look of hard edges instead of soft shadows. And then if you add a little bit of color to those, it'll look more like a natural reflection. You know, let's say that, let's say that uh, I'm a square. I am a square. <laughs> and so if I'm reflecting right off the center of the circle, it's going to look like this. The corners get pushed in because they're closer to the edge. The closer something gets to the edge of the circle, the more it gets squished. Everything in this room that's behind me is going to reflect somewhere off the face of this. No matter how far that way it goes, it's never going to reflect off of the very edge because that edge is wrapping back and it's going to capture background. So everything gets more and more squished. Let's, let's make this a checkerboard and watch what happens to the shapes if I continue to squish them in the further I get. So let's put another one here. Let's continue these lines. That next one is going to be squished like this. It's like a diamond that got scrunched that way. Let's make another one here. Get scrunched like that. Another one here gets scrunched like that. Another one here gets scrunched like that. 
Okay, and then if we make another one here, it's gonna get scrunched like that. This one will be like this, this one will be like this. This one will be here, 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 here. All I'm doing is continuing my lines. I can do the same thing just by making these lines. Reflections get squished like this. They never make it to the very edge. They get more and more squished the closer they get. So the effect that has on shapes is something that, you know, takes some getting used to. It's, that's hard work on the brain to render that. But, you know, I, if I have a light like this up here and it's going to reflect on that, well, my reflection might be, let's say, um, you know, that the reflection is going to be right about here. This edge is going to come right about here. And then uh, this is going to go here with a slight curve to it because everything that was would have been closer to the edge is getting squished this way. So that corner squished this way and creates that curve. So the reflection is going to look something like that. And then if I have myself in the circle, then that's going to be most normal at the very center. The closer it gets, the more squished it gets. So my forehead is going to start normal size, but then start getting really little and squished right here. My chin is going to be really tiny because it's getting closer to the edge. And then uh, my shoulders are going to be really little because they're closer to the edge. My neck is going to be tapered like this, you know, like those cartoony drawings. My uh, feet are not going to make it all the way to the edge of the circle. Nothing does. Uh, without going into the background and then so my legs are going to be really short because they're getting really squished and my body is going to be like this. So the closer it gets to the edge of the circle, the more squished it gets. Okay, so I've just made a, a gray background that just has some muddy colors in it. I just blended it with a big brush and, and uh, watched it dry for a while. And so the colors that I'm going to be using are just red, yellow, blue, black, and white. I'm going to just make a circle here that's going to be chrome, silver, and I'm just going to use black and white to start with. So let's make a circle and let's make the black right here. And then we need to add white. So get some of that black out of here. So for starters, you know, I'm going to think that there's a shadow. I'm going to turn that shadow into a reflection and just make a hard edge. So let's say that it's the reflection of, of uh, anything that is less bright in the environment, like the ground. The ground is not as bright as the sky. So if I wanted to make this look like chrome outside, like on a car, then I would definitely want to put brown in that shadow to represent ground. Ground usually has some brown in it. If it's inside and it's just a Christmas bulb, well, then still, there'd probably be some kind of brown in there. But to start with, let's just use black and white. So, imagine, you know, just, just imagine the height of the object. Is, is it above eye level? Is it below eye level? And the things in the room, you know, imagine a horizon where the, the bright lights overhead uh, are separate from the dark objects down below. So you want to imagine is that above or below the object. So if this object is down low below eye level, then you're going to see the bright area is going to be more of this circle shape right here. If it's the other way around, and you're looking up at it, then this dark area is going to be, is going to um, arc up like this, right? So I'm just mixing them together now. <laughs> so you can choose which way to go. You can do a, a level line straight across so that it's like a horizon between the sky and ground. And it, this is right at eye level in that case. So you just decide. So. The thing about metal is that 
it reflects, you know, I've talked about how water has the gradient to it where things that hit it at an angle like this bounce off and you see lots of reflection, but things that hit straight on go through it and you don't see a lot of reflection. Well, metal is different because it reflects from just about all angles, even looking straight into it, like looking in a mirror, it still has tons of reflection if, if it's polished and smooth. So, because of that, it has a lot of color. And so you want the color of your objects in the reflection. So if I make this a little bit bluer, let's do that right now, white and blue. This would be like a real common outdoor piece of, of uh, you know, polished chrome is going to have a little bit of blue in that bright spot, which just represents sky. Put a little bit in there. But I'm mixing it, you know, with the gray. The less gray you mix in there, the more it's just going to look like a mirror. And let's go a little bit brown on the shadow. So to do that, I just add orange to black. That's brown. Some red, some yellow, probably a little more red, and my brush has a lot of white in it, so I'll try to get some of that out, add some black. There, now those colors feel a little bit more like something that's outside reflecting, but it's incomplete. It's very simple and it's missing the background colors. So let's put a strip of my metal color with my background color, which is just gray. So this is a little bit boring. So we'll make a gray, but we don't want it to be real dark because this background is not real dark. Metal typically is a dark gray. You know, if you were to unpolish it, uh, you know, it can be, it can have a real dark look. And, you know, with the reflection, it's always a mix of the object with what it's reflecting. So I'm going to make a gray that's a little bit darker than this because most likely the natural color of this metal is a little darker than this background. I can add even more white to that and still be darker than that background. Let's go like this all the way around this edge. Right here. There we go. And then if we just put a real bright spot that might be the sun, wherever you think the sun would be, then we have the look of a, of a silver ball. And so, you know, we can mess with that reflection and do a, a whole bunch of, you know, fun things to it. You know, you, you might take this, uh, you might take this down, right? So it's not the exact colors. There's not a certain set of colors that automatically makes something look like chrome. It just depends on what what uh, the environment is around it. Here, let's let's drop this horizon down like this. See, it still looks like chrome even with this little dot in there. So maybe there's a dark object reflecting right there. So you can put little fake objects all through the reflection, and it's no big deal. Let's try to tidy up that reflection that I splattered on there. And you might have more than one bright spot because there can be more than one light reflecting on it. You might have a bright object that is, you know, somewhere in the background that's just making a little strip right there, another one here, another one here. You can have more than one bright object in there. You can also have, you know, a person standing 
in there somewhere. And so that person might be uh, dressed in red. Right here. And, you know, they're standing off to this left side and their image is getting squished. And I need to make them kind of dark so they don't look like a glowing red light source, you know. So I mix red with some gray, you know, object color with what it's reflecting. I squish that that bottom into there and then I maybe make a make a, a little bit of yellow and red that might be that person's face right here. And put a little bit of white on there to highlight that face. And then maybe a little bit of uh, black where it might be their might be their hair here, you know. <laughs> this is funny. So I'm just messing around with this shape in here because it could be anything. You can have all kinds of stuff in there reflecting in this circle. And um, you might have a tree in there. Let's put a little bit of green for a tree or, or a little bit of uh, green on the horizon. So black and yellow will make a green. I'll add some blue so that it's not, not uh, too much of that olive green color. All right, there now we have trees. Now I want to make them gray because this is a gray, gray object. This metal is gray and then I might put uh, that green if there's a lot of trees around. Might go right up along this edge And then if they wrap all the way back, you know, if they wrap behind that, then, then uh, you know, it just depends where they are. Uh, I don't want to put them all the way to the background if they're not actually going behind the circle. I want to stop right there. All right, so then you might have a little bit of a darker color uh, somewhere in this because you're taking a real gradients look real good when you have a solid block of, of dark reflection it's nice to put a little bit of gradient of color in there so I'm making my brown because you're taking a really large image and scrunching it down small and a large image has variation of color in it so in uh, in doing the appearance of metal uh, uh, you know, chrome or something that's reflecting, those gradients can look really good. So here I'll make it more black, here I'll make it lighter, and then maybe there's a bright spot on the ground below it, just a lighter area. Sometimes the sun is shining on the street, you know, so you'll have a brighter color right there. Whatever. You could go a million different ways with this. And you have all of those colors in there. Uh, so this, this would make a lot more sense if I actually had these objects in the, in the picture. You know, if I, if I had this, actually this color is not too bad, you know. If I had a brown right here, this is what it would be reflecting. So I'm kind of reverse engineering this and I'm just going to make a, a, a brown color that is not as gray. I'm just taking the gray out of it. Right? This is fun. All right, and then if it goes all the way back, like this, okay, that changes my reflection. Now I'm gonna to wanna to take the gray with the brown and make the base 
of my, let me find some, some water here. Add a little thing of water. And, uh, yeah. Now I'll take this brownish gray, and now that that brown is in the background, just do it right here. I'll put a brownish gray in there. Uh, you know, I guess it should be darker rather than lighter. That probably makes more sense. Right, so that's how you do chrome. Uh, now, if you just want to do a basic kind of chrome, then you might leave all of these colors out of it because without context of the objects in the scene, this is kind of weird. You know, you need the colors around it. Like this brown makes this brown make sense. So really, this whole thing is on, on this kind of a background, this kind of layout is gonna look better if I, if I just stick with my simpler black and white. So now let's do a different color in here. Here, let's get rid of this because that thing's bothering me. Let's go back to our ordinary, ordinary colors. So we're gonna put a little bit of black in here. Okay, now it's a Christmas ornament and it's in a house. So naturally that house is gonna have a little bit of browns in it, but this gray already has some brown color to it. So I'm just gonna leave that. And then, you know, um, in this house, the bright color, you know, houses tend to be painted with a lot of times kind of earthy tones, I guess. Well, I don't know. I'll just say that this one is. Right, so we won't put the blue because this is not outside. We'll just put this bright color here and then we'll bring this around here. Like that. But let's say that there's a window letting some bright blue light in. So that color is gonna be right here and I'm gonna put a little bit of blue in it. That's a lot of blue. And it looks kind of green because it mixed with my other paint. There. All right, and then uh, maybe there's some other lights in the room, you know. And let's make sure the shapes get stretched out longer as they get toward the edge. And then let's say that this is on a tree. If it's on a Christmas tree, it's gonna need some green in there. So let's put some black and yellow and blue around the edge. more of that that dark you see and it's just on the very edge like this because what I'm going to do is put a background of green keep missing the blue, I go to dip in the bucket and then I miss it. All right, we're gonna have to go with a little bit of impressionism here. Pine needles. 
Oh yeah, best pine needles I ever painted. Let's put some shadows in here. Now I want to make that reflection consistent with this. So I'm going to mix it with gray. So black and white. I think this will do it. Make sure we get enough dark color in there. We want to get a nice that's reflecting a shadow, I think that the reflection of the shadow on the metal, because the metal is a dark color, I think it should be even darker than the tree. So let's put a real dark shadow right there. so much paint on this canvas. <laughs> All right, and then we, maybe we have this, uh, the little topper on this thing. Let's just put a little bit of black there and there. There we go. We'll just kind of fake that. So now what if there is a red bulb on here? Let's do a red one. Um, so I can right away just do this while it's wet. I'll put the red in here and I'll have my background. As a general rule, I add red to any, any mix of paint colors because when you mix paint, it tends to filter out the red and get you a greener result than you want. But since I'm just using red already, this is as red as it gets. I'm just going to let it mix with that green background. Now red and yellow, uh, or uh, red and green light will make a yellow result. So I'm going to put a little yellow in this. But not a lot, because I do want it to be a shadow. A little bit will do. I want it to be a dark color. And I want it to be... Oh, I didn't finish that sentence. I was deciding if I want it to be darker or lighter in the shadows on this tree. Let's just see how that looks. All the way around so that it's getting the colors of the background, which is the green of the tree, bright red in the middle. So now I'm taking my bright interior colors and mixing them with the red. So I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to this because I don't want it to look all pink. Lots of red. And a little more white. I want it to be nice and bright. Let's put that same light reflection right there. I have to finish my red reflection though. So this is all the bright areas of the room. We'll do a similar shaped reflection so that these look like they're in the same environment. There, now I need a real red, red. Right here. 
So in anything that you want to look metallic, you know, you always have the color of the object mixing with, you always have the color of the reflections in that color. You want those colors to be in there. Uh, if I wanted it to look more like plastic, I would just take all these colors and make them closer to just red or closer to just gray. Uh, not as much color of the reflected object, but metal really reflects the colors. Okay, now let's take some black because there's some dark, dark objects in the room. So black and red. And then I'll just put my reddest red, you know, somewhere in the middle of this. Just so I have some representation of my color of my bulb somewhere. And then I'll just keep my brush strokes in skinny. As things get closer to the edge, they get squished and squished and squished. So I don't want to have any shapes that don't look squished on those edges. You might do a little thing here. That could be anything in the room, just an image getting squished on the face of that. All right, let's do a gold, a gold bulb. So whenever you mix yellow with, with any dark color, uh, it's gonna turn kind of green. So whenever I make shadows on anything yellow, I always add plenty of red. So just remember that. Okay, let's get a background color for the green. So I'm gonna take, look, I have some on my easel here from earlier. I'm gonna see if that'll work. So I can pretty much just mix yellow with the dark green to do this one. Yellow, black, and blue. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Get the green of my tree in there. You know, I think that that's greener than I want it to be, so I'll add a little bit of red. Maybe I'll go a little bit more on the red. Might have gone too far there. A little more yellow. And black. Oh, my black spilled right there on that. You see, I take time to really try to get the right color, but I don't guess my way through it. You know, it's always based on, well, what should it be according to what my environment is. Now, that doesn't look like a gold bulb yet because I don't have any bright colors on there. Oh man, that really bothers me. So let's put some bright colors yellow. I already have all this black and red in my brush. That might be all I need. So let's just get some white. Put the bright area on this. Here, see it doesn't take much. But notice the difference of color. You know, for it to look like metal, you need that difference of color. Let's put the bright spot on there. And then let's put, we already have this kind of more orange color in here, but I'm going to make it darker. A 
some red. Black, red, yellow. The darker I make a yellow, the more I want to... Brown is a great color. You can just go straight to brown if you want to do a good shadow on, on a yellow, but I just don't have that. Alright, then maybe a few objects in the room. Let's put an object here, just like this one. Put an object here. And let's put some pure yellow because maybe there's a yellow object in the room reflecting off of this yellow. That looked a little bit extreme, just a little bit less. <laughs> Forgive me. And I think that uh, this would look good if it had just a little more shadow to it. And let's add that green. See, I want that, that background to be dark too. Well, well, I don't know. I don't know, that's a tough one. This is a tough one for me because I feel like, you know, the tree might be darker than the other things in the middle of the tree. So then really I would want this edge to be darker, but then, you know, I like that dark contrast at the same time. So, uh, but then, you know, if I want a light colored, a light colored bulb, I'm just gonna make it darker around the edge. Metal tends to be dark in color all by itself. So, I'm just gonna make a darker reflection around the edge using black and yellow. We'll just say that the color of, like the silver one, let's say the color of this object is darker than the color of the tree. There we go. The high contrast looks better to me. All right, so there's my, there's my three bul bulbs. That's how you do the reflection in them. And now the only thing left to do is put the reflection of each bulb in each bulb. So here, this one needs a reflection of a red bulb and a gold bulb. So let's mix. Remember, this is going to be way over here on the edge. So it's going to be really squished. And it's pretty much just a gray. Uh, a uh, red mixed with a black and white. Let's do that. I want to make sure I get it dark enough. Now remember, when it comes to light and reflection, when you mix colors, the mix always ends up a little bit more violet than the colors you're mixing, well, um, than what it would with paint. I mean, with paint, you know, red gets filtered out and things end up kind of green. And well then, coincidentally, the opposite of green is violet. When you mix light and things aren't filtering, things get more violet when, when you mix them. So if I mix red with another color, then I want to make it a little bit more of a violet hue if I really want to dial that in and make it look like very natural, very natural light. I'm just going to borrow some of this red here. All right, now I have the reflection of the red bulb and I need the reflection of the yellow. Really, I should have made that a smaller dot because, you know, putting this one in here now, they're going to touch each other. And I don't want that. All right, so let's do a yellowish gray. So I gotta remember it's gonna try to turn green on me, so I'm gonna add red. Here's my yellow bulb. Let's 
Let's add a little more gray to that. A little more black and white. There we go. And then, like I said, I don't like this. Uh, I don't like those touching each other, so I'm gonna change that. Let's try to get my my interior light color again. Is that being perfectionistic or what? I'm gonna make this a little more gray. I mean, really, who knows what's in the room? They might have like really beige colored walls that are reflecting on this silver color. And then let's put a few objects in the room. I didn't do that with that one. Get some red because those are kind of green. Maybe it's another Christmas tree across the room. All right, and then I think that this would look good if I if I darkened it. Let's put a real dark bluish green on the edge of this. I'm assuming that the color of my metal is darker than the color of my tree. So then I put that reflection of the background color as an average between those two colors. All right, now I want the reflection of my silver in that red. So let's put a little you're not even going to see the gray spot on that thing. A little more black. All we're looking for is just a gray spot. There we go. And it really should be more black here. Yeah. Might be a little bit of white in there. It might catch some of that brighter area of that. Right there, and then we're gonna put the gold in that. So that's gonna be the yellow mixed with the red. Yeah, that's good enough for me. You really wouldn't see very much of it. Okay, now let's take some of the red and put it in the gold. And that's also going to be the yellow mixed with red. Pretty much use the same color. Right there. And then we want to put the gray in the gold. So, man, I've got enough colors down here on my easel. I can just grab them. Now that's reflecting the top side of this, so there'd be a little bit more, a little more bright color in there.
right there. messing with stuff. Let's put a few more white dots. More than one light in the room. Okay. Thanks for tuning in and watching the video. I really appreciate it. And um, I, I just don't have time to do the Q&A at the moment because I'm in such a hurry right now to run over to our new house that we just bought and put drywall mud and paint on the walls. Uh, we're really on a, a timeline. So I've got to get this video over to my brother to get edited and get it up so that you can see it. But next week, I'll be eager to see what you have to say and make sure we get to those comments and questions. And I'm loving the shout outs from other countries. Keep them coming. That, that really just gives me a thrill. Uh, I have a great time doing these and I look forward to seeing you next week.